Hey folks, this is the Wayne S. Beer Show podcast for Tuesday the 10th of June 2014. So many things are going on, so many things just, they don't seem right, okay? They just don't seem right. After the break, I'll get into what doesn't seem right. But let me lead up to that by saying this. You had this shooting in in uh, Las Vegas. People said it was a false flag event. People said it was a staged event. I shouldn't say false flag. People said it was a staged event. Uh, my question is why? I mean, we, ha- we have to look at that why, okay? Why was it uh, staged? Um, Also, an Oregon shooting, school shooting, live updates as police hunt gunmen armed with semi-automatic weapons. There's three things you have to, and that's from mirror.co.uk. Three things you have to realize about that. Number one, it's very vague. Number two, it's a school shooting, gun-free zone, because now that's been put into the narrative of school shootings. And also, semi-automatic weapon. Sandy Hook Elementary School, same thing. He didn't have it. <clears throat> Some people, and even the doctor who <clears throat> worked on the uh, body, apparently, uh, allegedly said that uh, he was uh, pretty much uh, others even as well would say that uh, this person, Adam Lanza, was dead before he got there. So anyway, lots of things going on, and we're going to go check out a whole lot of stuff at Drudge Report, 21stCenturyWire.com. We're, we, we're, we're just having a huge, huge, um, uh, just... Land grabs, school shootings, unconstitutional laws that are just, you know, being executed by, you know, a dictator. Um, It's just, it's one of those things, folks. We have to consider what we're going to do today. The 10th of June 2014. What are we going to do today? Everybody's planned for a summer vacation. Everybody's, you know, checking things out. Everybody has, you know, all these things that are, um, you know, working. They, they're they planning their future. They're doing... Folks, let me tell you a little bit of reality. Let me give you a reality check. If you don't figure out what you're doing today there is not going to be a future for you to plan. Okay? I'm just putting it out there, folks. You can figure it out all on your own because I believe that the people that listen to the Wayne S. Pierce Show and also the Views Express Live are some pretty intelligent people. I really believe that. Uh, But I also believe that we have to... (laughs) I'm going to say this, wise up a little bit to what's going up, to what's going on around our world as well, okay? And all in all, we have to uh, understand how uh, these things are uh, really affecting everything that we do and uh i'll talk about that a little bit as well and i'll be back right after this it's no longer a conspiracy theory it's a conspiracy fact the tsa is out on the streets the fbi is spying on you and you are in the crosshairs of the new world order Come listen to The Views Expressed with your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Hold on tight. Get ready.
Hey, you folks, how you doing? This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast for the 10th of June 2014. How y'all doing? My God, there's so much stuff going on. I don't know where to begin. But how about if we begin uh, at uh, Free America Radio on Facebook? Go check out that page, give you a little uh, preview of what's coming up on uh, the views expressed today at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I may have to cut the show short, uh, the views expressed, that is, because of the fact that uh, I have some other commitments. So it only it might be only an hour and a half. So I'm not sure, but we'll take it from there. Uh, from KGW.com, police raced an active shooter at Reynolds High School. Yes. Here we go, folks. Gunman student dead at Reynolds High School. Some reports more gunmen. Troutdale. One student was killed and the shooter was also dead after gunfire broke out inside Reynolds High School in Troutdale Tuesday morning, police said. I do believe this is Portland, Oregon. So I just wanted to let you know. Two students who were at Uh, The shooting scene reported that more than one person had a gun and one was stripped of a weapon after a search and taken into custody. Police raced to Reynolds High School just after 8 a.m. Tuesday after shots. Uh, Gunshots were reported at the Troutdale School on the last week of classes. SWAT officers quickly started surrounding and searching the school as students began to file out their hands on their heads in the evacuation. Just over an hour later, police confirmed that the shooter was dead and said they didn't believe there was more than one shooter. At 10 a.m., police confirmed that one student had also been killed. The student's name and gender have not been released. Track coach Todd Rispler told KGW he also suffered a graze wound to the hip in the incident as SWAT teams continued to work their way through the school, evacuating students were uh, bussed to nearby grocery store parking lot. Of course, the parents and all that were involved. Folks, this is just another (sighs) I'm going to say this, and I'm going to put this out here so you can criticize me all you want, but I'm stating fact because I'm a realist. Gun-free zones kill people. What? Yes, that's a general blanket statement. Every single gun-free zone is open to people, psychopaths, lunatics, people that want to cause trouble to bring a gun into these gun-free zones and do critical and extreme damage. Do you understand me? There are schools in Kentucky, there are schools all over the place who now are training their teachers and uh, faculty members to carry a gun and they go out and train with them. It is time we now arm the faculty and the teachers and put a big ass sign out in front of the school. Half of this, half of the faculty and teachers of this school are armed. Guess which one? I mean, you know, it's come down to the fact that we are not living in a society that is peaceful anymore. So what? Perpetuate the the anger and the frustration and all of that with arming people and continue to to instill fear in people and all. no 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 no. No. What part of protecting yourself do you not understand what part of protecting your students do you not understand what part of protecting your property do you not understand now granted property can be replaced a person's life cannot okay let me state this again gun free Zones kill people. Got it? Okay. 
something to think about. And if you disagree with me on that, I want to hear from you. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. And please go to the website as well at uh, Free America Radio. <coughs> Dot us and give me a moment folks um, <clears throat> the uh, I got a message here on my cell phone and I've got to reply but again I'm going to say this one more time and let me break it down for you um, gun free zones are a target for lunatics and people, excuse me, and people who want to cause severe damage to anyone. Do you understand me? Okay, gun-free zones do not work. Period. Okay? Period. All right? I am sick and tired of people telling me that I have to calm down. I, I, I had somebody do that recently. Somebody said, well, why don't you just take a chill pill or, you know, they said it in such a way to where they were, you know, patronizing me or whatever. It's like, oh, calm down. It's not that bad. No, kiss my ass. It is that bad. We just had this shooting in Las Vegas. We just today had this shooting in Troutdale, uh, uh, you know, near Portland, Oregon. And we got what? Okay. What? what, what, I mean, seriously. Okay, you're going to tell me to calm down? Okay. You're going to tell me to calm down. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? But because I'm getting a little riled up here because I'm just getting a little a little angry, okay? And I apologize for being angry, but I, you, you can understand the frustration and my anger, right? So I don't want to blow off and yell and scream and, and jump up and down and get really wild here on air. So what I want to do is, is I'm going to take a little a little break and then I'll be back to discuss a few more things. We'll get off this topic. I'll uh, put uh, that link is on uh, free on. Uh, let me go look and I'll tell you where it is. It's on Free America Radio on Facebook. It's the first one up there. You go check it out. You go read it, and you'll understand why I'm so frustrated and pissed off. In the meantime, folks, email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Uh, I'm going to take a, a, a short break here just to calm down, okay? So <laughs> email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Waking up the masses. Truth, knowledge, and wisdom for your consumption. Waking up the masses. News and views concerning the new world order. Waking up the masses. Join Bob Brutus as he pulls back the curtain on the esoteric agenda which has been in play for a millennia. Waking up the masses. Wakingupthemasses.com Hey, welcome back, folks. This is the Wayne S. Pure Show podcast for the 10th of June 2014. I calmed down a little, so I'm fine. I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to blow up anymore. Hey, let's go to uh, uh, another article. By the way, the article I just mentioned uh, about the shooting in uh, Troutdale in Portland, Oregon, uh, is up on Free America Radio on Facebook. From 21stCenturyWire.com, Bunker News Break exposes latest on federal land grabs and destruction of local communities. Uh, 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 21st Century Wire's Patrick Henningsen and GMN uh, Guerrilla Media Network host Pete Santilli exposed the realities behind SB1805. Again, SB1805. Sierra Bravo 1805 and other plans by the U.S. federal government to destroy local communities. The Bureau of Land Management, no stranger to the use of armed uh, 
force and abuse of power on behalf of the U.S. federal government has been designated by the U.S. Department of Interior to administer to national monument land. Meanwhile, economic corruption on Indian reservation and land communities to create a a divide and rule culture. How soon will this model spread to your local community, or is it already happening? There's a uh, audio of the show breaking it down for you. Uh, there, uh, the um, there's just uh, I cannot tell you, folks, uh, how this whole thing has just. No words can describe how I'm feeling at this point. From Texas Farm Bureau and the Texas Farm Bureau News, farmers and ranchers will drown in a river of regulation if EPA has its way. Find out how their proposed water waters of the U.S. rule affects one Texas farmer. There's a video there on Free America Radio on Facebook. Check that out as well. Also from ZeroHedge.com, across America, police departments are quietly preparing for war. Okay, that is something that you really need to take a look at. And I seriously want people to understand one valuable piece of information. Okay? Okay. There is nothing in this world worth more than freedom and liberty. And I'm not just talking about the U.S., I'm talking about other countries as well. Because as you can tell from all of the riots of tens of hundreds of thousands of people getting into the streets and and protesting against their corrupt government you can see in their hearts and eyes and you can probably imagine in their mind they're looking for peace freedom and liberty in their countries as well so it's not just the u.s it's us against them it's the people the that want liberty and freedom against the powerful elite and guess what goliath fell did he not So you have to understand that no matter what the fear is, if you allow that fear to take hold or if you allow that fear to be in your heart, even in the most minute manner, the elites are going to uh, capitalize on that and instill bigger fear in you in this divide and conquer culture that we currently live in. Okay? And it is, you know, it's the Cloward and Piven model of overwhelm the system. Go look up Cloward and Piven. That's also on, I believe, on uh, uh, Free America Radio on Facebook as well. I'm not quite sure. Let me go look and I'll tell you. The, uh, no, it's not. So it is on my personal Facebook page, though. Uh, (laughs) And, uh, oh, by the way, here's, here's what I'm talking about. Revolution News. Revolution-news.com. Brazilian police attack striking subway workers days before World Cup begins. That's not so much about freedom, but that's just about, well, people are protesting. We have to shut that down. That happens in the U.S. all the time. Okay? And the... Here it is. Uh, I'll share this on the Free America Radio uh, Facebook page uh, about Cloward and Piven. And this will give you an idea of what they, the elites, want in the United States of America. Period. This is their, this is their operating system, if it were. Uh, and they will not stop. They will continue to overwhelm the system to their very last resource, and they will uh, do everything they can. So guess what? If 3% of the British colonies fought against the 
uh, British Army in 1775, 1776, and beat the crap out of them, and we got a United States of America out of it, I think that we, the people who want liberty and freedom in this country, can defend ourselves by any means necessary. Now, I don't like violence. I never have, and I never will. But I can tell you this much. I am in total and absolute support of defense, and we have to defend ourselves immediately now, today, 10th of June, 2014, because the crap is going to hit the fan pretty damn quick, out of nowhere, unexpectedly, and you're going to be sitting there with your ass in your hands trying to figure out where to go from there. I am done with stupid people. I'm not going to put up with them any longer. You're going to be stupid. You're going to be down the road. Okay? And that's just the way it is. And I and I feel, for me anyway, I feel that it is, uh, from my perspective, I, I believe and understand it to be a total and absolute, on two levels, a psychological war, and a physical war. You break people down psychologically, you can come in with the heavy arms and the heavy military and just take them away as slaves. Okay? They had flintlocks and long rifles on the ships when they uh, pretty much stole the uh, African natives and and white people and, and Asian people and Indian people and put a gun to their head and say, you're coming with me because now you're a slave. We now have, you know, they, it's all over the place, have bigger weapons to do their job. And their job is to collapse the United States of America, enslave each and every single one of us, and possibly, according to the Georgia Guidestones and Ted Turner and Bill Gates, depopulate the earth by over 85-90%. Okay? So I don't want to hear stupid people tell me, that's not me. No. Pack your crap. Get on down the road. As a matter of fact, why don't you just hop a ship or a plane or walk to a third world country? Because obviously you don't want peace, freedom, and security in the land of the free home of the brave okay so you can do whatever it is you want to do I'm not I'm just saying this is what I see from my perspective now again let me go to this shooting in Las Vegas they uh, I heard that it was a Uh, staged event but why would it well how about uh, uh, how about uh, targeted individuals look that word up in your favorite search engine how about behavioral targeting look that one up okay Vegas Rampage underscores the rise of violent radicals. Cop killings up 53%. Law enforcement killed by gunfire this year is up 53%. Where is the, uh, where is the uh, breakdown of that? Give me the list of that. 53%? No, I think it's a lot lower than that. Sunday slaying of two Las Vegas policemen raises to 23 the number of law enforcement officers killed by gunfire this year a 53 percent increase over the tally at this time last year which is spurring concern about the influence of radical groups so there's that that is also on free america radio or is it let me go look i want to make sure i give you the uh the the proper link here because i want you i hope encourage you to go out and look this stuff up yourself so you can assess it and draw your own conclusion question is folks the question is how can anyone deny 
the facts. That article I just read of that first paragraph is uh, uh, is up on Free America Radio on Facebook. How can anyone deny the facts? How can anyone put their head in the sand so far where they not only ignore the facts but totally deny them? How can they, folks? That's a question that you'll have to answer on your own. Hey, I'm going to give a big shout out to the one and only Brian Lang over at LiveTruthRadio.com and also his show Live Truth Radio on WakingUpTheMasses.com. Also want to give a big shout out to Bob Brutus over at WakingUpTheMasses.com and his shows Kicking the Capstone and Waking Up the Masses. Also want to give a big shout out to the one and only... Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Hopefully he'll have his shows on soon. He's taken a little hiatus due to some technical issues of his computer. Uh, So I also want to give a big shout out to some Spreaker people. You know, this is on Spreaker.com as well, and that's the platform I use uh, for my shows. And it's a great place to be. Uh, I want to give a shout out to J.R. Wild. He has a lot of music shows over there at his uh, uh, network, uh, J.R. Wild. Go look him up. Awesome place to be over there as well. Also want to give a big shout out to Tom Slick over at Radio Rock the Blitz 92.6. You can find his show, uh, Radio Rock the Blitz 92.6 on Spreaker. Uh, the Morning Brew is the show that he does, so uh, check that out on Spreaker as well. Also, Michael Vera. Yes, Michael Vera over at Late Night in the Midlands.com. He has some excellent guests on, and he, uh, he just gets right. He's also a realist, and he also looks at everything and pretty much... You know, if it's possible, he'll look at it. If it's impossible, he'll at least look at it and discuss it and try to find some reasoning behind those things. So, very good show. Late Night in the Midlands over at LateNightInTheMidlands.com. And, of course, we have The Views Expressed Live I host 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on freeamericaradio.us and also uh, the Wayne S. Pierce show, this show here, which is usually live on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. And every so often, as you can tell, I do podcasts to uh, fill in the days that I got something to say. So usually I tell you what's going on beyond uh, what I tell you on the Views Express Live, and I give you a preview of what's going on, on views, uh, what I'm going to be talking about on the Views Express Live. So coming down to the bottom of the hour, I want to uh, take a little break. I'm going to come back, regroup, reset, and uh, tell you about what's going on and uh, I go everywhere, folks. AP, Reuters, Infowars.com. I hit Drudge Report. I go everywhere. So I just don't have just one source for all, uh, you know, the information that I share with you. So if you have any questions, no question is off limits. Hey, ask me anything you like. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. You can go to the website at freeamericaradio.us if you want to. Uh, that's for the Views Express Live. And if you want to uh, go to this show's website, you can go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show. And uh, get more information there as well. Uh, again, freeamericaradio at usa.com is the email. Freeamericaradio at USA. Dot com. Be back right after this. Local radio with a worldwide connection. The Free America Radio Network. Go to www.freeamericaradio.us.
For all you independent artists, musicians, and filmmakers, there is a place for you. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. Listen to Angel Clark Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Radio Freedom News Network. Radio Freedom. US. Hey folks, welcome back to the Wayne S. Pierce Show right here on Free America Radio Network on the 10th of June 2014. Hope you're doing good. I hope, well, it's Tuesday. Everybody does better on Tuesday, don't they? So many things are going on, so many things I want to tell you. And the question is, and I'm going to ask you another question, something that you're going to have to look up yourself, something that you're going to have to answer on your own with the information that you can find on your own. The question is, is if there's so many people unemployed, since we all know, we already know why, because of Obamacare, if there's so many people unemployed, why isn't there an effort by your city, state, or county to uh, help them start a business of their own? Huh. Something to think about, huh? Um, now, <sighs> I'm on Drudge Report, and I'm looking at some of these headlines, and I just got to tell you, the um, the one thing that I find most disturbing is people ignoring the crony capitalism in this country. I also find it quite odd and and equally as disturbing is seeing people who are more or well, applauding the left for what they do, okay? Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. People are going to say, well, what's so wrong with that? What is so wrong with that? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. The left wants communism, period, end of sentence, done, stick a fork in it. If you don't believe it, you don't know history, do you? And along with that comes this, this, this whole idea that we have to get rid of capitalism that, well, not we, I don't, I love, you know, uh, working and, and and making a living and and you know doing all that's great and I, I you know we go along with that but the far left doesn't want capitalism. I'm even going to say this: there is no such thing as left and right. The ones that are in control that operate behind the scenes, controlling those puppets we call the Democrats and the Republicans. They want total and absolute control over everything that you ever do in your whole entire life, including the work that you do every day, period. From Politico, it's not just George Soros anymore. What does it mean when the capitalist vanguard starts talking about inequality? Earlier this year, the most reliable way for a billionaire to make the headlines was to compare suggested tax increases to Nazi Germany. Lately, though, the more interesting shift in the politics of the plutocracy has been more genteel. There will be there will be more Hitler analogies, of course, but another camp among the super rich is starting to tack in the opposite direction. Some plutocrats 
Accept the evidence that capitalism is no longer working in the middle class and are trying to figure out what to do about that. It is not just George Soros, the hedge fund billionaire who cheerfully describes himself as a class trader and has been worrying about the shortcomings of what he calls free market fundamental, uh, fundamentalism for decades anymore. Among the plutocrats, this one radical perspective is going mainstream. You can see that in London, you can see that in London in late May at a conference on inclusive capitalism. Go look that up in your favorite search engine, folks. Inclusive capitalism. In the grateful gilded rooms of the Guild Hall, the historic seat of the city, one of the world's two centers of finance, international investors controlling $30 trillion worth of asset, one-third of the global total, gathered to discuss, as Paul Pullman, CEO of Unilever, put it, quote, the capitalist threat to capitalism, unquote. Capitalism, Pullman uh, and Lynn Forrester de Rothschild, the conference's organizers, wrote in an introductory essay, quote, this is what they say about capitalism, has, quote, has often proved dysfunctional in important ways. It often encourages short-sightedness, contributes to wide disparities between the rich and the poor, and tolerates the reckless treatment of environmental capital. If these costs cannot be controlled, support for capitalism may disappear, unquote. That was the curtain raiser. The discussion was kicked off by Fiona Wolf, Lord Mayor of the City of London. By the way, it's not London, England. It's City of London, which is the financial sector of the world. The discussion was kicked off by Fiona Wolf, Lord Mayor of the City of London, who warned that capitalism needed to be, quote, for all, not just the gilded few, unquote. Next up was Prince Charles. Yes, that Prince Charles, the one uh, saying he was related to Vlad Tepes, you know, Dracula, who said the triumphalism of capitalism when the Soviet Union collapsed had been a mistake and that the, quote, the long-term job of capitalism is to serve people rather than the other way around, unquote. The morning's keynote address was delivered by Christine Lagarde, managing director of the International Monetary Fund. She quoted both Karl Marx's prediction that capitalism, quote, carried the seeds of its own destruction, unquote, and Pope Francis's characterization of increasing inequality as, quote, the root of social evil, unquote. She came out against a favorite centrist reaction to rising inequality, quote, that ultimately we should care about equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome, unquote. The problem, Madame Lagarde said, was that opportunity could never be equal in a deeply unequal society. She called for more progressive income tax systems and greater use of property tax. These prescriptions may be far uh, may be par for the course for the populists who swept Bill de Blasio in City Hall after 12 years of Michael Bloomberg's plutocratic reign, or for supporters of Elizabeth Warren, the crusading liberal senator from Massachusetts. But they came from a man managing director of the IMF, whose organization has long been the villain in the anti-globalization movements worldwide, the fiendish mastermind of the plutocracy's quote-unquote shock doctrine, efforts to take over the planet. That narrative is still alive and well. Lagarde declined an invitation to be this year's commencement speaker at Smith College after students and faculty protested she should not uh, have been invited because the IMF was, quote-unquote, a corrupt system that fueled the oppression and abuse of women worldwide. 
At Guildhall, the day ended with a dinnertime keynote speech by another one of the architects and watchdogs of global capitalism, Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England. He said that rising income inequality was real and international. Quote, within societies, virtually without exception, inequality of outcomes both within and across the generations has demonstrably increased, unquote. He refuted the popular centrist argument that this is all about <clears throat> meritocracy. Quote, now is the time to be famous or fortunate, unquote. And he warned with strong language that the capitalist system was at risk, quote, just as any revolution eats its children, unchecked market fundamentalism can devour the social capital essential for the long-term uh, dynamism of capitalism itself, unquote. The spectacle of pl plutocrats eating porcini risotto <clears throat> Excuse me. The spectacle of plutocrats eating porcini risotto in the Georgian mansion and bemoaning the excesses of capitalism cries out for a Tom Wolf for Tom Wolf, one of British hack <clears throat> Let me read that again. It's a little something going on in my sinuses here driving me nuts. The spectacle of plutocrats uh, eating porcini risotto in the Georgian mansion and bemoaning the excesses of capitalism cries out for Tom Wolfe. One British hack made a start in that direction of equipping to his peers that the gathering would more aptly have been called the meeting about quote-unquote exclusive capitalism. But that was precisely the point. And why the conference and the broader trend it is uh, a part of matter. Most of the Inclusive Capitalism uh, Conference was off the record, but its invitation-only attendees were a roll call of a global plutocracy, including Google Executive Chairman Eric Schmidt, Blackstone co-founder and CEO Stephen Swartzman, um, and the CEOs of UBS, Glax GlaxoSmithKline, Dow Chemical, and Honeywell. There are other signs of this shift. Social finance, which takes into account social and environmental goals, is moving from a niche into the mainstream. One trillion dollars were invested in social finance funds in the United States in 2012, a five-fold surge from $202 billion in 2007. Sally Krawcheck, a former senior executive at Citigroup and at the Bank of America, who in June opened an index fund focused on companies with a greater number of women in top jobs and on their boards. She said the goal was to have a social impact while earning a fair investment return. Some other business leaders in industry you might not expect to have much of a social conscience are starting to support public policy that would raise their cost in short term. They include... The CEO of McDonald's, who in a little noticed speech in May said, McDo quote, McDonald's will be fine, unquote, if the minimum wage were to rise. Christia Freeland is a federal member of the Parliament for Toronto Centre and the author of Plutocrats, The Rise of the New Global Super Rich and the Fall of Everyone Else. There's a second page to this. Let me... Continue on, and it's not going to be that long, folks. Uh, just a little note here. You really have to pay attention to where your money goes. <clears throat> Continuing, this emphasis on fairness is a big and consequential change. Plutocrats were the chief beneficiaries of so-called neoliberalism and the suit of political changes it brought beginning in the late 1970s. Deregulation, weaker protection for unions, the shareholder value movement, and the subsequent inflation of executive compensation. It is no surprise that the super-rich supported these policies and the intellectual movement that underpinned uh, underpin them. What's striking is that today, 30 years later, in at least some gatherings of the plutocrats, we are starting to hear speeches that would have, that would not have been out of place in Zuccotti Park.
Remember all the Occupy movements and all that? <clears throat> it is no accident that May's Inclusive Capitalism Conference took place in London, that the two most powerful speakers were French and Canadian, and that the economist who work has best captured it, this new spirit of the times is the Paris-based Thomas Piketty. America is the indispensable nation, and it is the driver of the techno, uh, technology revolution. We are used to the world's theme songs being sung in an American accent. <clears throat> they forgot one thing, folks. Just a couple of weekends ago, the Bilderberg meeting happened in Copenhagen, Denmark. And most of these people in this article that this person is talking about were there. Continuing, but for more... Uh, for American plutocrats, accepting that capitalism isn't working for everyone can be a more bitter pill than for many of their global peers. That's because in the United States, more than anywhere else in recent decades, wealth and its accumulation came to be viewed as a civic virtue. As Nick uh, Hanauer, a Seattle entrepreneur and investor, has pointed out, to be rich meant by definition that you were good. Thus, Hanauer says, has made it particularly nice to be a rich American. You enjoy morals as well as material comfort. An important part of this story is met, uh, meritocracy. In America, more than any play, anywhere else, the plutocrats define themselves as self-made investors and strivers. They built it themselves. This is especially true of Silicon Valley, and it is no accident that its tech tycoons are the most accepted, even beloved, face of American plutocracy. There is data to support this self-regard. In 1982, 40% of the people on Forbes' 400 list were self-made, meaning they owed the their wealth to businesses they had built, not inherited, according to research by Professor Stephen Kaplan and Joshua Ra. In 2011, after three decades during which the income and wealth at the very top shot up, the percentage of self-made plutocrats increased as well to 69%. This aspect of the rise of plutocracy doesn't get much attention from the left-leaning students of the phenomenon, and for good reason. Self-made wealth, particularly when it is acquired through the creation of a product we love, Gmail, the iPad, is hard to criticize. That's why Lagarde's and Carney's speeches at the Inclusive Capitalism Conference and the wider intellectual trend they are part of are so significant. Equality of opportunity is the public policy of choice of the uh, meritocrat, uh, meritocratic plutocrats. <clears throat> it is no accident that education is the focus of so much American philanthro capitalism. But Lagarde, and let's remember she's the managing director at the IMF, argued that equality of opportunity is ins uh, insufficient and probably impossible to achieve in conditions of soaring inequality. Carney took the um, meritocracy justification head on, asserting that, quote, returns in a globalized world are amplified um, the rewards of the superstar, and though few of them would be inclined to admit it, the lucky, unquote, and invited the assembled CEOs and investors to judge public policy through the uh, Rawlsian veil of ignorance, quote, not knowing their future talents and the circumstances, unquote. Considered alongside Peckerty, uh, Piketty, excuse me, whose signal, uh, political contribution sing, uh, signal, whose signal political contribution is the idea left to its own internal logic, capitalism will create a society of ever greater and eventually inherited disparities in wealth. These arguments represent a sea change in how we think of the market economy. To be sure, there have, all, there have always been voices on the left that argued that capitalism should be thrown out altogether. But that isn't Piketty's position. He takes care of identity, uh, himself as a child of the post-1989 era for whom capitalism is the only plausible economic system. 
What's new about Piketty's argument is his departure from the crony capitalist critique that has been dominant among progressives, particularly since 2008. For him, the problem isn't just a few greedy, corrupt fat cats. It is the system itself. Increasingly, this is now the case that some plutocrats themselves are making. Many more of them are listening. From Prince Charles to Unilever's Pullman, from IMF to the Bank of England... Uh, an influential group at the heart of the global capitalism is arguing that capitalism needs to be changed in order to save it. The intellectual tides are turning, and eventually that could mean the political tides as well. Uncharacteristically, at least for the post-war era, Americans aren't in the, uh, the vanguard. But it is a mistake to think that the Gordon Gecko or even the Steve Jobs version of capitalism is the only way Americans have ever approached their political economy. We are accustomed to assuming Americans are culturally comfortable with great disparities of wealth and that Europeans are born, born social democrats. It was not Ever thus, here is Thomas Jefferson overlooking slavery, of course, writing from Monticello in September of 1814. Quote, we have no paupers. The great mass of the population is of laborers, are rich who can live without labor, either manually or, uh, manual or professional, being few and of moderate wealth. Most of the laboring class possesses property, cultivate their own lands, and have families, and from the demand for their labor are enabled to exact from the rich and the competent such prices as enabled them to feed abundantly, clothed above mere decency, to labor moderately, and raise their families. The wealthy, on the other hand, and those at their ease know nothing of what the Europeans call luxury. They have only somewhat more of the comforts and decencies of life than those who furnish them. Can any condition of society be more desirable than this? Unquote. That sounds a lot like inclusive capitalism. Again, Christia Freeland is a federal member of Parliament for Toronto Centre and the author of Plutocrats, The Rise of the New Global Super Rich and the Fall of Everyone Else. This is going to be put up on the Free America Radio page. Uh, and, you know, interesting. <clears throat> you can read that on, uh, for yourself as well if you'd like. And uh, I think it was already up there. I think I shared it like twice. I don't know. Nope, there it is right there. It's the only one up there. So, folks, it is always a pleasure uh, coming to you with the Wayne S. Pierce Show and the Views Express Live. And um, <clears throat> I got to tell you, the um, I, I, I'm going to put it out here for you. Many, many years ago, at, at the inception and creation of the United States of America, the way this country was built was upon the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial spirit and on, uh, with the entrepreneur, with the person creating their own uh, company and, and doing what they did and, and all this. And I'm pretty sure there were farms and ranches and, uh, and a bunch of land that was being you know, used to grow food and sell in the markets in the little towns around the United States. But I got to say this, and, and I'm going to put this out here because it's, it's vitally important, vitally important to understand Having inclusive capitalism for the few is a direct result of them having the power over us, creating that inequality, both psychologically and physically, economically and politically. It, that is what it is. Now, to go the other route and have everybody be equal, everybody have their opportunities, everybody, that's going way too far to the other side, and that in itself cannot sustain itself for very long, okay? Because then, you know, all sorts of things will happen. But when you come to an understanding and you come to a level 
of understanding where, you know, you have to, excuse me, um, hang on, <clears throat> thank you very much, folks. When you uh, have that level of understanding where, you know, you've got these these powerful elites that have all these trillions and trillions of dollars, what people are saying is fundamentally within them within their own selves within their own mind is that person's making a hundred million dollars a year how come i'm making minimum wage i need to make a living wage to be able to take care of my family well what's a living wage well, now you've got this idea of the rich have all the money, the poor and the middle class have absolutely barely enough to make it, so why not give everybody a living wage? Well, I'll tell you why. That would be a great idea, except for the fact that when you go to Target or Wendy's or you know McDonald's or whatever, they're going to have to raise their prices to pay these people a living wage. So that means that they're not going to be able to afford anything, and it's going to be equal or not even equal. It's going to be the same as it was before. So you're running into the same situation. And like the CEO of McDonald's said, if they raise the minimum wage, it wouldn't matter. They're going to, they're going to survive. You know? So the rich understand this. This is why there is a... I'm going to say this, there is a safety valve, economic safety valve, to these companies that say, yes, we can raise it to this level, whether it's $10, $12, $14, $15 an hour, whatever, and we'll be fine, but we cannot go over that. Because basically what they're doing is they're saying if we keep the prices, I'm just going to throw this out here, if, if McDonald's keeps the prices at the you know where they're at right now and gives everybody $15 an hour working uh, there at McDonald's part time or not McDonald's is going to be fine they're, they're going to be it's going to be fine why because the corporation with all the other stores is going to funnel some of that money into these higher wages so the prices on the menu are going to be the same they're not going to go up they may go up a dime or two or whatever you know but it's not going to be so bad to where the company's going to suffer. You understand. But anyway, I can go on and on and on and tell you what I know, but you're going to have to go out and figure this one out yourself. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and, um, you know, go from there. Um, there is a uh, just a lot going on. Come join me on the Views Express live today at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on freeamericaradio.us, on uh, spreaker.com, on wakingupthemasses.com, and also on 1610 in the Chickamauga, Georgia area, 1610 a.m. in the Chickamauga, Georgia area. I'm also on terrestrial radio there. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it, 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 we talk about so much stuff on there, we, like I have a mouse in my pocket. I talk about and give you my opinion, my take, and show you some of the background of why these things are happening. And uh, I hopefully encourage you to prepare yourself for what's coming down the line. And it's only common sense and intelligent to be thinking today uh, you know, about what you can do to take care of yourself. Because, you know, you can plan for tomorrow, but if something happens today, how are those plans working out for you? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, seriously. Uh, you can go watch all the football games and basketball games you want, and all X games and everything, but if you don't prepare yourself for what's coming at you, you're never going to know, uh, or actually you're just going to get bowled over like a freaking steamroller, and that's just going to be it. All your plans are going to go out the door. So anyway, come join me on the Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on freeamericaradio.us, spreaker.com and wakingupthemasses.com and also on 1610 a.m. in the Chickamauga, Georgia area. Email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. That's freeamericaradio at usa.com. <laughs> <laughs> 